January 29th, 2019, Apple released its Q4 2018 quarterly earnings. They noted an astonishing 1.4 billion installed devices. iPhone sales were sadly down 15%, but rest of their product lines were up 19%. In what's become a tradition for quarterly earnings calls, the executives spoke in terms of customers, products, growth, earnings, all the things you would expect on a quarterly earnings call. The reason that executives provide this information is because these are the foundation for any company's success. The problem is cryptocurrency projects have not been held to the same standard. Yes, blockchain tech is revolutionary. Yes, we've removed the untrusted third party. Yes, we've broken geographic boundaries. Um, but the truth is, uh, we use terms to explain ourselves because we're a different type of organization. We're decentralized, we have protocols, we have foundations. Um, the reality check I'd like to share is nothing here succeeds without customers and revenue. And most cryptocurrency projects are actually businesses like every other. I'm going to talk a little bit about what that means here today. Um, a little bit of background on Flipside. We were founded by three co-founders. We met uh, about a decade ago at a company called Smarter. Smarter provided machine learning skills assessment. We could validate anyone's skill in anything in 10 questions, 120 seconds. Um, after we uh, sold Smarter in 2014, we decided to activate on crypto. We became very excited about the potential of this space and what it could mean. So we began hiring a team. And we brought in people from Accenture and Bridgewater. Uh, we uh, raised some money, Digital Currency Group, Galaxy, Coinbase Ventures, etc., and we began to get to work. The first thing we did is we decided to build a fund, and our thesis was, if these organizations are businesses, then the fund should be driven by fundamentals. So we began capturing data that would lead us to conclude how fundamentally healthy any crypto organization might be. So we have three data sets we collect. Um, the first is product development. If you're going to uh, back any company or understand its worth, you're going to need to know whether they can develop and deliver product. So we began ingesting open source code repositories. We now ingest about 18,000 of them every day. We track 30 data points across them, so commits, forks, stars, everything in between. And we began to model how those things intersected with each other. Um, and those factors led us to understand what a healthy, product life cycle might look like. The second thing we decided to build was a view into customer activity. So we wanted to know, of all these blockchains, all these technologies, which of them actually had customers, and which of those customers were retaining, which were churning, and which ones were healthy. And so we began ingesting blockchain transactions, and we began uh, finding patterns in order to understand where the customers resided. The last thing we analyzed was financial stability. So for this, we cared little about the price of the asset. We cared mainly about whether the asset was able to be invested in. Was it uh, liquid? Um, was it risky? And all these things that would allow us to say, this asset uh, held by this company who's using it as a form of capital to grow their business, uh, it can be invested in. Okay, so we began investing using this data, and we realized pretty quickly that these three things, when taken together, would tell you exactly whether a company was fundamentally healthy. So we began productizing that ourselves. We began looking at them as one thing, and we turned the three of these data sets into a single comparable score we call FCAS, Fundamental Crypto Asset Score. Um, FCAS became a standard for us to start investing, and then we realized as companies started calling us and asking what their rating was and how healthy they were compared to others, that this might be interesting if we were to publish it in the market. So we took FCAS, um, we talked to our friends at CoinMarketCap, thanks for having all of us here today, uh, and we decided to begin publishing FCAS to the market. So FCAS now lives on the ratings tab at CoinMarketCap. It also uh, is on MarketWatch and The Street, and Masari, and other places you might go to understand the health of a crypto organization. And we rate about 520 assets, um, we uh, launch new ratings every week, um, and we really look for assets that might be healthy enough to give an indication of value in the market. 
Um, everyone asks the same question, so I'm just going to show you the top nine assets out there today according to our ratings. Um, all of our ratings are on a thousand point scale. Uh, they also have uh, letter grades to make it easy to understand. Uh, we have uh, S's are superb, um, four are in the S range, Ethereum and EOS are at the top, and then we move into A's and some folks you'd expect, Bitcoin, uh, Cardano, Stellar, are all A graded assets in our network. Now, the most important thing about rating any asset in this class has to be its customers. And so we started under, trying to understand how are we going to look into all these blockchains to understand the customer activity within each of them. It's very complex. Each chain is developed differently. Each one has a different uh, structure and style. And so we started developing a system called chain walking. And chain walking's intent was to allow us to go into any chain, extract out exactly what the customers were doing so we could analyze it. It works a little like this. We go uh, uh, put our uh, tools into blockchain nodes. Um, the nodes allow us to extract the transaction data. Um, as we start looking at it, we put it into a universal data model so we can look at any chain compared to any other chain. We then apply some behavioral modeling and the result for us is we're able to actually create analysis differentiating types of customer behaviors. Um, to date, we've chain walked about 30 chains, uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, uh, Algorand, Aon, who's here today, uh, many others, um, to help understand their data. Um, so this is probably, if we think about where we really get um, the, the insights that we're able to achieve, this is the most important thing. We apply clustering uh, behaviors. We look at each behavior of every transaction, and we apply this modeling that allows us to cluster. And that modeling lets us do certain things. For example, if an address is moving through a network, touching exchanges and satellites in a certain behavior pattern, it's likely a speculator. And if it's actually doing other types of behaviors, it's some type of user. It might be a miner, uh, and that has certain behavior patterns. It might actually be a customer of the chain, and so we're able to interrogate that and understand that type of information. The most important thing that comes out of this is a view into stakeholder intelligence. So this is the part where we started to understand we could get to this data, and blockchain companies started approaching us and saying, could you tell us, can you help us understand our customers? Are we growing? What are they doing, et cetera? So I'm gonna show you a quick video here of something we provide to some of our clients called stakeholder intelligence. It breaks down the distinction in their types of customers so that they can look every day next to the actions um, they're taking. So you can, can't do that. Let's try it again. It's not gonna work. Okay, can, in the back, can you, can you run that for me? Let's try it one more time. It's not gonna work. You guys aren't gonna be able to see it. I'm so sorry. <laughs> one other thing, what I was gonna show you there is you can actually look on the customer line and see how many customers are growing based on actions how many holders are growing, how many speculators, and then you can align that for price. Um, the other thing that was in there was we were gonna show you a bit about Steam. Um, Steam is actually one of the most active chains. Um, they have about 800,000 transactions a day. Um, uh, those are customer transactions, and they have uh, many dozens of different behavior types. Um, one of the number one behavior types in their system is voting. Um, one other type of uh, stakeholder intelligence we might provide is Ethereum trends um, or platform trends. So we'll actually go through uh, a platform, we'll actually put our data in there, and that will allow us to look at all the dApps, all the other things that are existing within that platform to understand product market fit and other things that are happening. I'm going to guess this one isn't going to work, but we're going to try it. Let's give it a shot. This one's working. Okay, so what's happening here, you can actually see the trends. Um, you're going to see here what's the trend of payments, what's the trend of stable coins, and let's say I wanted to go look a bit more deeply and understand which projects were starting to grow within Ethereum. Um, so I could go in here, I could first note that more than half the projects, upper right here, half the projects are actually active in Ethereum. Uh, and then these bubble charts below, you can see active addresses by daily transactions. There's DAI, uh, there's CryptoKitties all the way over there. Um, we could then go look at um, categories. So let's start paying attention to which categories are growing. Size of the bubble here is developer activity, so that's stable coins. 
And now maybe let's go look into stable coins. We can see which coins are having, uh, or which uh, uh, programs, dApps are having traction. So if we go below here, there you go. Um, these are all the coins, dies at the top. Let's look at TrueUSD. And what we're gonna be able to see now is how's TrueUSD doing, how many developers are working on it. And we can then go in and see which developers are doing what activities. Okay, so this developer here uh, has been working on a whole bunch of projects, but only recently have they been working on TrueUSD. Okay, so this is the type of behaviors we can start to extract. We can educate not only the project themselves, uh, but some folks come to us and ask for insights across other chains so they can attract developers or learn what types of tools they might want to invite in. Um, we now work with about 75 projects. Um, I'm going to give a little shout out here to our friends at Metronome. Metronome was the first client of ours. I'm giving them five stars here. Probably very excited by the five stars. Um, with Metronome, we help them understand things like the impact of auctions on their price. So how many participants would properly uh, best uh, uh, lead to a price outcome uh, for Met? Um, what chain should they be chain hopping? Um, they also, um, one of the things we found out was top 10 asset and uh, total locked value. Um, so basically, they're able to build very interesting DeFi applications uh, because they have uh, capital to deploy um, across their locked value. So people ask this all the time. Okay, you guys have looked at all these chains. You're actually seeing what the behaviors of customers are. What are the things you've learned over the last few years? Um, so here are five things we've learned about blockchains by interrogating all this data, 150 billion transactions. What can we tell you? So the first is price continues to wag the tail of the data dog. Um, every chain is worried about their price. Um, some start at the end, hey, can you just move my price for me? Well, we can't quite do that. Um, why don't we focus on maybe your customers? Because if you go back to the Apple example, uh, customers tend to drive outcomes. Um, you would never get on a quarterly earnings call and just say, hey, Apple, tell me how your price is going to move. You would say, do you have more customers? If you have more customers, I might invest in your asset. Okay, learning number two, vanity is as important as reality. Okay, so FCAS is a wonderful rating system. It's useful to investors. We have free tools on our site if you're an investor. But it is also something that helps a project understand their own health. Um, but the reality is, the reason it's so powerful is people are looking for ways to articulate their value to the market. With so many chains, so many projects, it's very complex to get your project out there ahead of others. So FCAS is a tool for that. Everybody's looking for other tools to create value in the market. Learning number three, it's critical you understand money flows. So um, tokens are moving fast all through these networks. Your stakeholders are doing different things. We're going to see in a minute uh, a bit of an example from um, an understanding of what miners are doing with the token. Um, but if you don't understand where your tokens are moving, who's moving them, and what they're doing, it's very hard to achieve uh, a top uh, asset. Learning number four, everybody wants to know what everybody else is doing. Okay, so this is the, cl the question we get asked all the time. OK, well, you've looked at all these chains. Can you tell me the answer? Uh, to the homework. Can you, can you just tell me what everyone else is doing? Can I see across chains? Um, this we actually think is pretty healthy. Uh, the blockchain is a relatively open ecosystem. Um, we've actually had a number of chains say, hey, hey, you can chain walk us and just share our data. Like, let people learn from what we're doing. Um, we think that's a pretty good um, thing for the industry to do. And learning number five, um, this is my one political jab, uh, much like the 2016 U.S. presidential election, uh, attendance is a little bit overstated. Uh, so here, um, most chains are really struggling in order to attract audience. Uh, and this is the thing that's going to define which chains exist for the future and which ones um, are going to go away. Great. Okay. Our next guinea pig, Rob Viglione from Horizon. Welcome. Yeah. Here we go. Awesome. All right, guys. Uh, happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Uh, okay, so let's see if I can do the, the green button here. All right, this is really just a reference. I, I, uh, I came from the hard sciences background and went into academia uh, and was actually teaching Bitcoin blockchain applications and finance. And then I launched uh, Zen Cash a few years ago. We were sort of in a stealth mode, and I'll talk about our recent kind of coming out as a project um, with, with new technology. But basically what we are 
Um, if you guys haven't heard about us yet, we're, we're a massively scalable blockchain-based privacy platform. So we bootstrapped uh, you know, a few years ago as uh, a privacy coin experiment, experimenting with zero-knowledge cryptography, ZK Snarks, and recently extended that into the data domain uh, with our sidechain system. So we've brought to market a totally decentralized sidechain system. So this is what I mean by scalability, because you could actually launch uh, any type of blockchain consensus as a sidechain to the Horizon network. Uh, we just released an alpha version of that. Uh, who we are as an organization, we have about 50, 50, a little bit more than 50 professionals around the world. We have a uh, main headquarters with our engineering and R&D team clustered together. Everyone be besides that is really decentralized. We have a bunch of partnerships, really a ton of partnerships, uh, in, from academia to uh, plenty of people in this industry, including Flipside, uh, so really happy about that. And uh, we, we have kind of a little known fact is we have the largest node network in the industry. So if you think about us as a project, uh, the way I look at it, and we'll go through uh, a lot of the statistics and try to tease out what that means in terms of like value props and what we are uh, as an organization. Um, but we have you know, 30,000 high quality servers around the world running our software. We have a fantastic team and we have unique technology that we brought to market that we think will actually help this technology scale uh, into the business domain. Uh, so this is the tech that I'm talking about, a totally decentralized sidechain system uh, where you can really create any type of uh, blockchain consensus, including the, the first that we're going to release with the beta of our product uh, in Q1 is going to be a, a version of Ouroboros Prowse, which is basically the, the technology that Cardano runs with. Uh, so a proof-of-stake Cardano-based uh, sidechain tethered to our proof-of-work uh, Horizon mainnet. Uh, so really excited about that. We have the Zen uh, currency that basically is interoperable throughout our ecosystem, uh, and the technology bridges that uh, sometimes awkward gap between private and public blockchains. So for businesses, instead of thinking, will I build my private blockchain or plug into a public network, you could actually do both with our system uh, and do it in a way that makes sense, that scales, leverages security of uh, you know, our, our huge node network and uh, proof-of-work blockchain and economies of scale. So that said, we have a ton of partnerships. Uh, we have a, what we call a full stack business. Uh, basically, every function that you could think of in a business, we're not just an engineering shop, um, despite having uh, you know, a fantastic engineering team, but we really focus on all aspects of building a community and then building a, uh, a technology. And this, this last chart right here, I think, is really perfect to queue up this discussion because these guys, I, I think, were really the, the first to discover us in the sense of uh, I was shocked when I saw the data coming off of their system because a lot of the work that we were doing up until a few weeks ago was really private. So you could see our network exploding in size, you could see some of the products we brought to market, you could see our, our community uh, growing very rapidly. But what they actually teased out was metadata from our GitHub repositories where that work was really done in private. Now you can see it, we just you know, released the alpha version, uh, but there's a big disparity here that we'll go through some of the numbers. Uh, and, and this chart is kind of inverted in a way where we are probably uh, at least one up, if not you know, the highest, uh, FCAS ranked project. I think we're nine in the industry right now um, relative to our market cap. So it's very interesting. Mm -hmm. If you want to get into that. Sure, let's do it. Okay. Cool. Um, right. so let's talk about your rating here. Okay, so this is Zen's rating. Um, so let's talk about a couple things we see here. Look at that dev behavior. Mm -hmm. Clearly, you guys have been working hard um, since <laughs> July. That's, that's pretty crazy. Well over um, 850, so 887. That puts it in the top rank. User activity, huge spike. Um, we're going to talk about some of those actions that are happening. Uh, tell us about market maturity. It looks like it sort of dove off a bit. That's the sort of financial stability. How should we think about that? It, it has been growing. Right. I, I mean, so the reality of that is that there are things that, that are beyond our control. So when I think about managing our project, we're extremely data driven. But I think a big component here is the volatility in our price. And our price has been extremely volatile uh, because we haven't been engaging in, say, like market making activities. Uh, we haven't been engaging in any type of investment. We've been focusing on technology and community, um, but that will change. So one thing to note, market maturity, financial stability is less than 5% right. of the overall FCAS rating. And the reason we care about that is because if you get your customers right and your product right, your volatility is going to take care of itself. So, okay, a couple other cool things we're going to show you here. So this is a, uh, this is a chart of stakeholder activities. Mm -hmm. For, uh, for Zen, so you want to walk us through what happened maybe late September, early October here? Right, so uh, we've uh, just recently gotten into a, a kind of a fanatical position in terms of uh, new user acquisition. So we are very much a community project. First and foremost, we use technology to bring our community together, 
but we've recently engaged in a ton of uh, growth activities. In fact, we use this data to inform those activities that we do in a way that can iteratively improve them. And you can see uh, some of the fruits of this labor. So our community size has been going a bit exponential. Yeah, so this is pretty cool. You can see customers drove way up, obviously, in October. Um, we consider holders, which is the middle chart, these what we, we consider high potential customers. So if someone's holding your asset, they're not speculating, they're not a customer, you know, they need to be doing something for you. So we like seeing that downward trend of holders over time. And clearly the speculator trend, pretty fantastic, driving those uh, speculators. We're going to lay price over this. So you can see this campaign actually did have an impact on price. Pretty, pretty, pretty powerful. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Okay. So the next thing, let's talk, talk about what you were trying to solve here. You asked us to look into miners. So what was happening here? Right, so we, we actually we care about all aspects of what's going on in our ecosystem. So one big thing was we wanted to tell what happens with uh, kind of virgin Zen or Zen that was just mined. Do people mine it? Do they hold on to it? Are they actually strong users of our technology? Are they people that are strategically say accumulating or want to build a position? Or are they just dumping it in the market? Are they really just kind of minor mercenaries? Uh, so this was important to us because we're now starting to think about how do we create a healthier marketplace because before we just really weren't considering that, which you could see reflected in our market maturity score. So I don't know if you want to talk about some of the results here. Yeah, so this is, um, this is a view into the miners specifically. So we've removed all customers, all speculators. These are just the miners. So six months, about a million uh, Zen distributed. And you can see on the right here, 54% were liquidated. So a lot were being sat on. Um, so we started looking a little bit more closely. Um, what are the miners doing now with the rewards? So it looks like, um, I don't know if you, we have the miners lifted on, listed on the left here, but you can see most of the miners are still holding. Is that good? Is that bad? Do you like that? So for me, that's a great thing. In, in fact, the, the question that we were trying to answer here internally was, what type of mining algorithm do we want and then why? Right? Let's be a little bit intentional about what we're doing. And the big decision was whether or not we uh, kind of uh, keep the status quo, and right now we're an ASIC mineable project, or do we try to revert back to our early days when we had a lot of uh, you know, very heavy community supporters in the GPU mining uh, community. And you think, what, why do you want decentralization of mining? And there's a whole bunch of governance stuff that we can get into. Uh, but w from this perspective, we're thinking, you know, uh, are ASIC miners just kind of mining and dumping immediately, or do they have some loyalty? Because we're trying to build an ecosystem, and an ecosystem that's healthy and well-governed. Okay. Last thing we'll show you here is then we can move into sort of nodes and staking. And so right. you've got a trend here. Are the sort of node holders keeping their stake or are they liquidating those? So the, the pink here is the remaining. They kept staking. Uh, the purple is liquidating. So what do we see here? Right. So this is huge for me because this shows that our node operators, the people that are running the network, uh, are actually very strong uh, participants in our ecosystem for the long term. This is exactly what we want to see. And what I didn't mention in a previous slide that you had was actually I was shocked by the numbers of unique node uh, uh, operators in our network. Um, so actually, we have something, like I said, 30,000 full nodes running our network, but actually from almost 22,000 unique operators, which is shocking to me because we know that we have you know, people run multiple nodes, but you know, this is so much better than one entity running 30,000 nodes. We actually have over 20,000 20, you know, unique entities. Pretty powerful stuff. So one yeah. thing um, we were talking earlier, Rob and I, um, you know, one thing that would be useful, and I think we're going to start right. doing this, is okay. Is this good? Is it? What, what are other people doing? Are, are these? Is this minor behavior something that's typical? So now what we'll start to layer on is where do you sit within others? Others that you care about? Is this the behavior you should be seeking? Do these miners behave this way with other tokens? Um, so that's that'll be the follow-on uh, task from us. All right. Can't wait. All right, Rob. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Okay, Rob. Everybody. Zen. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs>